good afternoon, international Basel fans. Welcome here to the Araneta Coliseum in Manila, Philippines for the 2023 FIBA Basel World Cup. We're going to get this party started momentarily as we enjoy the local entertainment. The anticipation for all these teams competing in the FIBA Basel World Cup, and only one of them will be able to take home the Naismith Trophy. But at the moment, we're going to find out as Italy takes on the Dominican Republic in the Game Day 2 fixture of Group A. Well, hello, everybody. I'm your commentator, Josh Bed, alongside head coach of the Austin Spurs, Will Voigt. Now, Will, these two teams are coming off the back of big victories that we saw in the Philippine Arena. What can we expect from this big showdown? Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, first place in the group up for grabs. Both teams have to feel good about the wins that they had. Obviously, Italy expecting a probably bigger margin of victory, uh, but the, in the end, executed the way that they wanted. Of course, Dominican Republic with a huge win against the crowd of Gilas looking to uh, pull up a relative upset tonight. Well, going back to that victory for the Dominican Republic against the host, Gilas Filipinas, one thing for them to win in their favor was 17 offensive rebounds, but also 26 points off turnovers. Defensively, this team has got to be very hungry here against the Azuri. Yeah, there's no question. I think they're looking at the film from the Angola game and seeing how they could replicate some of the things that Angola was able to use to give Italy some problems. So expect a lot of ball pressure from them, probably some full court pickups as well. Well, I know we talk about the big man, the three-time NBA All-Star, Carl Anthony Towns, but again, the supporting cast of players, there is some unbelievable talent in this team. The likes of Montero, not to mention Feliz. I mean, this bench goes very, very deep. You look at the Philippines game, points from the bench was 24 points. I mean, that's not a bad lineup to have. Yeah, there's no question. I mean, obviously, Carl Anthony Towns carried the load for them, but they have a number of guys who can step up in big moments for them. Well, this team coached by the great Che Garcia, a man who was a champion with Venezuela at the 2015 FIBA America Cup, relieved of his duties from Argentina, and then he defeated them to qualify here. And now we move over to the Italians there. You can see Marco Spisu becoming the first guard to come out along with Stefano Tonin. This team, I mean, I don't know how to explain it other than one word, bravissimo. They are an unbelievably talented team. Yeah, no question. They had a great lead up to the World Cup, going undefeated in their tune-up games. I think everybody expected a show against Angola. Ended up being a little bit of a grind game for them. The biggest thing, they just didn't knock their threes down. Five for 31 in that game. I think they got some really good looks that they'll probably knock down as they move forward in the tournament. Well, that's a big point you made there, shooting 16% from the perimeter. I mean, this is a team, what we saw from the first game, it's almost like they live and die by the perimeter. No doubt, of course, they got the victory against that goal. They might be one of the top two teams in this group, but could that be something that affects them when we have the crossover with Group B? Well, they're going to have to make shots to win. I mean, every team in this tournament does. I think when they look at the film, they'll probably feel pretty comfortable about the looks they got. Most of those are shots that they'd be happy with and that guys will make moving forward. Well, again, ladies and gentlemen, there is the superstar from the Utah Jazz, Simone Fontecchio has been a proud representation against the three-time NBA All-Star for the Minnesota Timberwolves, Carl Anthony Towns, and you also know him as Cat. 
Well, again, if you are joining us on Courtside 1891, we do thank you for joining us. This is the 2023 FIBA Master World Cup. Another game that will go on today, we'll see our host, Gilles Filipinas versus Angola, which when we come back from the national anthems, Coach Will Boyd is going to tell his experience as the last time those teams met, he had the three-point victory, which was in China. But again, you can see the standing so far. The Italians currently top of the group after their victory against Angola in game day one, Dominican Republic in second. But now, ladies and gentlemen, if you can, please stand and pay homage and respect to the national anthems of both Italy and the Dominican Republic. National anthems of two very beautiful countries where fantastic vassal programs have been sung. And ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get set now to introduce our three referees for tonight's game. Well, the referees are Gatis Salins, Luis Castillo, and Yorgos Borsanides, coming from Greece, Spain, and Latvia. Well, now we're going to get ready here for the starting line of these two teams. And you can imagine that you can see Fontecchio showing a bit of love there. But check out here, two very passionate vassal coaches. I mean, when it comes to having a heart on your sleeve, you can definitely represent these two with that. No, no question. And, you know, Coach Pozeko relatively subdued in that first game. So let's see if he brings that normal fire to this match tonight. Well, it's going to be interesting to see how the Dominican Republic go with their start at five. No doubt we're going to see Carl Anthony Towns. I mean, he has been a phenomenal player throughout his NBA career. Well, they're going to go with Victor Lees, Andres Feliz, Angel Delgado, Lester Quinones, and Carl Anthony Towns. 
Now, looking at that lineup, of course, where would the bulk of the scoring come other besides Academy? You do have less than Quinones out there, and Andreas Feliz relatively quiet in his first game. Yeah, you know, I, I think they're probably going to look to try to get Quinones involved early. I mean, he's a guy that can really fill it, had a great season in the G League, was a little off in that first game. So I, I would imagine that's a focal point. And then, of course, Kat, you see the numbers from that first game, lived at the free throw line. Philippines really not able to, to keep them from penetrating from the perimeter. Well, there you can see a double-double in the first game against the Philippines. But he's going to have to have a very big game at time. I mean, we talked about being quiet. He almost had a triple-double. But we... to see who they decide to match up with with Carl Anthony Towns. Will it be Melly or Polinara to start out? Well, that is a big defensive situation that you mentioned. That's something he has to think about. He said in the press conference that he was a little bit negative with his players after the victory against Angola, and he did apologize. He also made a statement that he was very interested, intrigued if he could meet Manny Pacquiao one day here at the FIBA World Cup. But going back to basketball, what is going to be Italy's game plan against Carl Anthony Towns? Well, it'll be interesting to see, you know, the Dominican Republic used him on the perimeter a fair amount, and it's much harder to double team him from those positions. He was able to beat his man off the dribble quite a bit against Skilas. Let's see if he has that same level of success here against Italy. Well, that is going to be a key thing because we know Carl Anthony Towns, he can post up, you know, predominantly he likes to bring his bigs out to the perimeter. Very quick feet for a big man, also can shoot the three. You know, I imagine the defense that A.J. Adu from the Philippines put on Carl Anthony Towns, who paid him a lot of homage and respect, and said, hey, it made me a better player at the international level. The Italians might have their hands full. Yeah, no question. I mean, anybody's going to have a hard time defending him. He's such a difficult matchup. Can take you outside or inside if you put a smaller player on him. So, you know, perhaps one of the adjustments for Italy could be going smaller and then bringing those double teams if he does come into the post. Well, this is the fourth FIBA Basel World Cup appearance for the Dominican Republic, a country with a rich tradition in basketball culture, but surrounded by a plethora of nations and countries who really, it's fair to say, are simply basketball mad. Well, the Italians, two-time FIBA Eurobasket champions in 1983 as well, you can see that, but, you know, let's go and listen now to what Coach has to say to his players. Well, our official sponsor, the Tissot so Countdown to Tip-Off, is underway. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we do thank you for joining us. If you are on courtside 1891, this is the 2023 FIBA Basketball World Cup. It's going to be Italy taking on Dominican Republic. No, coach, a question i got to ask you, because, you know, having worked coach in the NBA G League, you know, worked in various positions with NBA teams, you know, a lot of people don't know you started with the LA Clippers, correct? That's correct, yeah. And, you know, for players who make that transition from the international game to the NBA or vice versa, there is a transition period that you have to learn. Well, there's no question. You know, I think the biggest thing for the NBA guys is adjusting to the physicality of the international game. You know, you've got to be able to finish through contact that you don't see at the NBA and G League levels. Well, the players have entered the hard lines, the full lines, the holy lines, if we like to call them. Dominican Republic. Round time for this beautiful country. 
but also a big occasion for Simone Fontacchio. Yeah, what a moment it would be for Cher Garcia. They go to go 2-0 and zero today. Let's not forget the accolades, the excellence of this coach. He's coached all over the world. But again, I think one of the proudest accolades was in 2015 with Venezuela. But now it's about Dominican Republic. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Let's get this game underway. Dominican Republic are taking on Liazori. Well, he's being heavily defended here in the backcourt by Marcus Fisu. I'm winding down here on the shot clock. Trying to do that pick and roll with Delgado. Well, Feliz makes a beautiful dive. He turns it over. Now the Italians have numbers. Tony makes one pass, finds Polonara. Again, an easy transition there by the Azzurri. Well, coach, it's just phenomenal how quickly the Italians are able to come up with a loose ball and just push the tempo up the floor. Yeah, they got to feel good about that, forcing the turnover early and getting the easy one. Well, mainly over helping on the defense. Oh. The Republic turning it over yet again. Now it's a three on one. Polonara trying to go all the way, bit of contact, doesn't get the foul, but he scores that one again. The issue right now is Angel Delgado appears to be in some discomfort, but I mean, being a coach at a top level, how much you love to see a big man run the floor? Well, and you know, the bigs of Italy, very skilled, able to play inside and out. You know, you see Coach Garcia with the early timeout. I'm sure he, he's got to feel disappointed with the way they've started this game out. Well, Italians doing two good jobs there of converting the turnovers into transition points. And now something, Nessa Garcia. Oh, no, maybe the, he's on the court. He's cool. What do you think of this coach? Well, you know, I think he sees Delgado injured. The point of the timeout is really to settle his group, less than a technical adjustment. He, he wants them to really find their composure. Uh, you know, this is about changing the momentum more so than really getting a message across with a board or whatever it might be. Well, Nesta got there currently on the floor with his players, so we're unable to hear what he's saying. He does have his assistant coach, Daniel Sione, a native of Venezuela, coach in the Israeli Winter League for Apoel Haifa. And also was an assistant for many years for the, one of the best teams in South America, the FIBA Liga de las Americas, Guados de Lara. So quite a very advanced coaching staff under Nesta Garcia. Yeah, and let's see if that timeout helps settle them down. You know, again, two turnovers leading to four transition points. Tough way to start any game, but uh, I'm sure this experienced group will, will find their way. Well, the Italians' defense making things very hot here for the Dominican Republic. Carl Anthony Towns got it by Achille Polonata. Patience needs to be the buildup here for the Dominicans. Trying to build that confidence. Seven seconds here on the shot clock. Trying to find an opening now. Cross it over. Kicks out. They go for three in the corner. Now that's going to be a 24 second violation. Again, suffocating defense coming from the Azuri. And you see the one through five switching that they did a lot leading up to this tournament. Very good at rotating out of that triple switching where they kicked those smaller guards out to the perimeter. So really nice uh, defensive possession there for Italy. Well, interesting in the Dominicans offense, they haven't got the ball early on to Carl Anthony Towns. Is that something they need to switch up? Oh, no question. And you know, I, I think Italy has done a nice job so far of really denying those entry passes. Well, Fontecchio going straight to the lane. Double clutch with a finger roll going to the basket. Nice start there by the Utah Jazz superstar. Dominican yeah. Republic now. Still looking for their first field goal. Gomez goes for a deep three. Three is up, no good. Belly fighting for the board. Nobody going in for second chances for the Dominicans. Belly going down the middle. Stefano Toten, excuse me, but now pumps this one down to Melly. A little teardrop, can't get him with the follow-up. Well, Akile Polinara, well, he is hungry right now, coach. Yeah, and you can just see Italy has more intensity and fire to them than the Dominican Republic to start this game out. Well, Kat goes for an early three-pointer, can't get it. The Italians wasted no time to transition. This speaks to you now, pick a pop here with Melli. Pump face, draws the contact, turns around. Everything just dropping here. We like to call this in Boca Lupo in Italiano. And this is where that early timeout actually uh, becomes difficult. You'd hate to use two timeouts this early in the, into the game, but 
The Dominican Republic still not finding uh, their way here. Well, Cat going for a long two point up. Well, now we're looking to push this one. There's Tony to his left, but again, he has to slow down. The Dominicans just preventing another Italian transition. Well, Spisi all the way, no help side defense at the moment. The Dominican Republic, they have to pull another timeout because Nessa Garcia, he has a big problem right now, coach. Yeah, there's no question. Uh, not the start that anybody wants to see. You know, Spisu able to get all the way from the perimeter to the rim. You never want to see that. Uh, but the Dominican Republic just seems out of sorts. Whatever it was, the early turnover is obviously uh, discouraging. But there hasn't been a whole lot of life to them to start this game. Garcia using up two timeouts already in under three minutes in the first quarter, but he, you know, when you're trailing 12-0 so quickly, I mean, what else can you do at the moment? Yeah, I think he had to use that second one. You know, you hate to do that as a coach, but uh, you can't get down, uh, you know, 20 points here without finding your way. So interesting that they haven't really been able to find Cat through their set plays. I think he got a little frustrated from not touching the ball. Those last shots a little bit rushed for him. They need to come out here and execute a set, find a way to get Carl Anthony Towns a solid shot here. Still searching for that first two points. Maybe a three-pointer. At the moment, trying to break down the Italians' defense. This is the key job here for the Dominican Republic. Now we're going to take a roll here. Town setting the bull screen. He's finding an open. Much better. Goes in. Count in. Gets the yeah, one. That's a much better start there. Well, that should build their confidence. Simple pump fake As coming from Philippe. Yeah, and the veterans stepping up for them when they needed it. Uh, even that possession looked a little discombobulated there. Felice able to make a play on his own uh, as the shot clock was winding down. Well, you like it was just a simple pump fake there because the Italians are anticipating coming up with a loose ball and just breaking down the other end. But well, that's what the Dominican Republic have to do. They need to find the weaknesses in the Italian defense. Yeah, and you know, Montero, uh, uh, a scoring spark plug here. Big numbers in the ACP this past season. Maybe he can give them some of that life. Tony trying to take off a lead. Chasing down the bull screens. There's the alley. Well, no, throws up a lob, sorry. Not a Dominican Republican break here. Montero using the double pick from Delgado. Trying to find the opening with Kyle Anthony Towns. Another kick out. Feliz wide open. Three is up. Three is good. And all of a sudden, the Dominican Republic slicing down Italian's 12 point lead. Yeah, Feliz with two big plays there. Able to hopefully uh, get them into this game and let them settle down a little bit. Melly with a post up here. Has a mismatch. So, guy has got to stand strong on defense. Tony almost turning it over. That's going to remain possession to Yazuri with six seconds left on the shot clock. Six seconds on the shot clock, six seconds to shoot. So far, it's only the Italians who have one team foul. Melly pulls up for a three-pointer. Delgado gave him enough time and space, but the Dominicans will survive. Montero go baseline. Looking for a kick out. No movement here for the Dominican's offense. Towns out. It's going to be a call for a traveling violation. Well, interesting well, decision there. Yeah, I think that's the right call. A little bit of a shuffle of the feet. Uh, again, so far, the Dominican Republic looking to get him involved from the perimeter. We saw a lot of success against Gilas, but I think Italy has really made that a focal point. The defenders shifted over every time Cat touches the ball. Well, Cat maybe needs to think about. Trying to get the ball in different positions. Now Tona trying to go straight to the basket. Gets bullied his way by it. Felipe. And now the Dominicans. Look at the push. Kicks out in the corner. Montero finds Victor Lees. And a foul is going to be called against Stefano Tona. <laughs> Tona just asking the referee 
Well, why didn't I get the same cool, but Che Garcia, he's loving the intensity from his players. Yeah, finally a little life from their team. You know, uh, whatever the slow start was, they seem to have moved past it. I think Feliz a big part of that to settle them down. And Carl Anthony Towns gets something going, throwing down to Delgado. Ten here on the shot clock. Delgado posting up against Melly. Goes for the tough fadeaway. One legged, can't get it. The Italian's looking for a counterattack. Well, Stefano Tonin at the moment, I think he believes he should be getting more calls, but at the moment he's a little bit out of control. Yeah, and a nice adjustment from the Dominican Republic. You know, we saw Tonin really getting to the rim a lot against. Uh, uh, Angola in their last game. So I think he came into this probably wanting to replicate that success of just drive and go, drive and go. This time the Dominican defenders sagging off and keeping him in front. Well, Gabriele Roshida checking into the game for the Azuri. Gianmarco Bezzeco still talking with the officials about why he, Stefano Tonin has missed his last two fouls against. The Dominicans have another chance here. Chance to cut this down to a two possession game. Terra finds Quinones. Deep three from no man's land, doesn't get it. How many players chasing him for offensive rebounds for the Dominicans? Well, Polinara does like to shoot three pointers. Dominican Republic. It's interesting with Polinara's shooting technique, it's very much a set shot. Yeah, you know, those bigs uh, typically able to get a little more space and time than, than the perimeter players able to shoot those set shots. Quinones now here on the ball. Bit of congestion in the Dominican offense. Quinones under pressure, gets rejected. And great defense by Nicolo Mele. Well, Mele right now defending the Italian kingdom, and that is the paints. In the end, he was able to block it. That was off Montero, so it went out of bounds. He's actually going back to the Azuri. Yeah, great rotation there from Melli, and Quinones still really hasn't found his way uh, in this tournament so far. Rashida pulls up from 18. That's a little bit too short. The rebound falls into the hands of Carl Anthony Towns. Well, Turner finding Victor Liege, but just throws it right away, but Polinara unable to come up with it. A bit of complacency so far in both these two teams' offenses. Yeah, and you can see the timeout here uh, from Coach Paseco. I'm sure he did not like that shot from Proshida on the last possession. That early mid-range pull-up, probably not something they want to see from the young player. Well, the Italians will call timeout as Gianmarco Paseco just wants to try and calm and settle his players down. I mean, I think they've gone about almost two, and two minutes and 30 seconds without a bucket, but let's see what he has to say. Well, my mother would be very disappointed, but I wasn't able to translate everything he said there. But I think patience in moving the ball was the key thing. And not taking very quick, poor shots. Yeah, I'm sure that, that probably was his message. Again, those last two shots they had, really early jump shots in the possession. Uh, you know, they got off to such a great start. You know you can't sustain that. So just wants to make sure his guys understand they're going to have to execute in the half court over the course of this game. Well, it's going to be the Italians' possession in their own half. But again, well, no, excuse me. It's going to be Dominican Republic, actually. So Polinara unable to secure the possession when he almost intercepted the pass from Victor Lees. Cat now, nowhere to run. Got by Prashida. Lees goes for a deep three. Three is up, and again, no good. But well, there's a chance there for Victor Lees to run in for a weak side offensive rebound. This is something the Dominican Republic did a great job against the Philippines, but we're not seeing it right now here against the Italians. Yeah, so far not the same intensity on the offensive boards. But interesting, you know, when Carl Anthony Towns has the ball, You've got Italy sitting in his lap, so they're going to be shifted over in heavy gap positions, not going to let him drive the way he was able to against uh, Gilles. Well, we talked about the 
comparisons of the NBA game with the international at the moment. Carl Anthony Towns has to adapt to the fact more space, more help side defense. Fontecchio now. Look at this one with a foul has been called. This is going to be called against the Dominican Republic. Delgado is going to get called for the foul. It will be the Azuri ball on the sideline. Lila Sandro Paiola coming into the game for the Italians. So it will be their ball on the baseline. This will be a key offense now. Ricci also checking into the game. Number 17 is a key player for them in the qualifiers. Oh, you like to see that there. One established already NBA All-Star. Just currently being defended. Montecchio down the middle, pulls off in the mid-range. Still struggling, but gets his own rebound. Tries to go for a quick three in the corner. Three is up and it's way off the mark. And Fontecchio out of sync here at the moment. Cat now. Walking foul is going to be called against Richie. I think Richie may have just took a bullet train right there. <laughs> yeah, that's the uh, that's the accidental block charge. I, I don't think he uh, intentionally was looking to draw that. Just Walking kind of wrong place, wrong team. time. I think that might have been a reality Richie. check for Richie. It looks, he appears to be okay. I don't think I would be okay if that happened to me, probably. Well, and you know, Dominican Republic with the double big lineup here, uh, I'd love to see both guys down low. I know it's a little bit of an old school basketball mentality, but they have such size advantages with the two of them. Well, Katz misses last few attempts. Nowhere to go here. The Italians help side defense. But a technical foul is going to be called against Jean Marco Bezzecco, and it counts. So Pozzecco gets the tee, I believe, or it's a bench technical. But the basket will count. Well, Richie is absolutely perplexed by the decision. So it's a bench technical, not a coach technical. My apologies. It will be one free throw coming. Now the question will be, no, it has counted, yep. Yeah, you don't see that very often. Generally, the officials uh, aren't, aren't going to text somebody up in the middle of the play. Uh, I'm sure that's what Coach Pozzecco is asking about right now. Coach, what's unbelievable right now? The Italians have gone well over three minutes without a field goal. I mean, this is this is a very worrying sign for them. Yeah, you know, I mean, they got to the great start, obviously, off the turnovers. But if you think about it, they haven't really executed in the half court at all to start this game out. Been reliant on transition points for this whole first quarter. Well, Cat steps up to the free throw line, makes the charity strike shot. So we'll get the ball back now. Gigi Jatome, the veteran, checking back well, into the game for the first time. Got it by Quinones. This should be a bitch mass now. Trying to pull his way to the basket. So the post move looking like an Italian. Kevin McHale with that move. Yeah, and interesting that Quinones ends up on Ricci instead of Tatomi, who, who typically would be playing the three in this lineup. That goes for another three pointer. The presence of Eloy Vargas does improve the Dominicans' chances of getting offensive rebounds. That's a big lineup the Dominican Republic have. They do, and uh, you know, I mentioned it earlier, I, I would like to see them try to exploit that a little bit more. You know, we haven't seen Carl Anthony Towns down on the block yet. I know Vargas doesn't space the floor like a traditional four-man would, uh, but those offensive rebounds, which were such a huge part of their win against Gilas, now come into play a lot more. 14 seconds fresh here for the Dominican Republic. 2.16 to go here in the first half. Got to get the ball inbound. Well, he could have come up with an interception there. Vargas just surviving. They go for another corner three. Three is up, and again, no good. Dominican Republic struggling from the perimeter. But can the Italians counterattack? Finding Richie top of the key, getting a ball reversal. It's going to a patient offense. Goes up and gets rejected on the pass, but again, 
Well, he comes up with a loose ball, still can't get it, and finally falls into the hands of Vargas. Can they push now? Up to the lane, takes a circus shot, and then a poor transition by the Dominicans. Feel the anxiety now for these two teams really settling in and affecting their offensive output. Yeah, for sure, as this uh, score tightens up a little bit, you can see Italy feeling some of that pressure. Well, Vargas takes the gamble, kicks out the Richie. Got it by Carl Anthony Town. Step back, three pointer. And six out right in the face of Cat. That's a big time shot by Richie. That's what he does. They've got their shooting lineup on the floor right now. Datomi and Richie really able to uh, space the court for them. Back to an eight point deficit. Cat's still trying to break the defense down. Dominican Republic struggling from the perimeter. Cat Montero settled this down, takes another one. And now we have five for five here for the perimeter. Yeah, that's really good ball movement there from the Dominican Republic, swinging it around, finding the open man there. Well, another bench technical is going to be called against the Italians. I'm not sure if this one's on John Marco Bezzecco or it is a bench tee. The last one was a bench tee. Well, Bezzecco is very animated right now, and you can see his coaching staff just trying to settle him down. Yeah, La Mosca Atomica, the, you know, the atomic fly that amazing persona that his team does feed off of. I mean, the energy, the passion is always there. We've seen it happen in games leading up to here. Sometimes that passion can get the best of him, but he feels his group has been flat, and there's no question. So, you know, maybe some of this calculated, try to get a little energy uh, to, to the guys on the floor. You know, I mentioned this in the opening game against Angola. Let's not forget John Marco Bezzeco, how great a player he is. You know, for new international fans that have seen him on the TV, you know, when he was coaching at Dino Sassari and all the teams he's worked for, he played on, and I've mentioned this already in the first game, on an Italian national team in a pre-warm-up game to the 2004 Olympics, defeating LeBron James, Carmelo Anthony, Allen Iverson, Tim Duncan, that's something he's going to tell his grandchildren, great, great, chant, and who knows, great, great, great grandchildren one day because, you know, he is just, as you mentioned, such a passionate basketball coach. And sometimes that does get the best of him. Well, and you know, that's the persona he had as a player, undersized guard, really had to, to rely on some of that fire to have the success he did. So not surprising to see him take that as a coach as well. Foul has been committed. That's only going to be the second team foul. The Italian facts, ironically, cheer, standing up and applauding our three referees. Again, we have three of the very best referees in the business. We have Gatis Salins, Luis Castillo, and Yorgos Porzanidis from Greece, Spain, and Latvia. We're getting a handoff now. Spaniolo pulls up in the mid range, takes it 15 feet, and just somehow. Gets a drop on that one. Nice little play there by Spaniolo. Yeah, the uh, you know young playmaker there. Interesting to see how he'll do. Struggled a little bit in that first game against Gilas, but obviously first time on the big World Cup stage here. Three seconds difference between game and shot clock. That got it by Richie. Two Italian players going for a Hail Mary three-pointer. Vargas fighting for the offensive board. Has to take the fade away, doesn't get it. And ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the first quarter, it is the Dominican Republic who leads one, excuse me, the Italians, who leads one 19 to 13 against the Dominican Republic in the second game of Group A. Live here in the RNS Arena, the 2023 FIBA Barca World Cup. But, you know, the Italians getting off to a formidable start, of course, looking very much invincible. They went a very long time, almost three minutes without scoring. Yeah, you know, when they weren't in transition, you can see the struggles. Allora, non abbiamo bisogno di forzare i tiri. Alla fine well, here are some of the key highlights from the game. And coach, I know, interesting stat, of course. You know, these two teams, neither of them really being able to get anything going from the perimeter, of course. Yeah, and I think that's an adjustment that the uh, Dominican Republic's going to need to make. Carl Anthony Towns, 0 for 4 to start the game out, has only been on the perimeter. Uh, you know, I think Italy has a great game plan. Every time he touches it, they're shrinking the floor around him. 
he's really not going to have driving lanes like he did in their game against the Philippines. The Italians in the first two minutes, you know, looked absolutely unstoppable. But then the, you know, Dominican Republic slowly were able to find ways to dissect the defense down. And it was the block by Nicolo Melli. Oh, just with the big rejection. Well, this is a beautiful, I mean, that's textbook post play there for Richie. That's something as a coach you must want to see more from your players. Yeah, and it, interestingly, they switched that matchup immediately after that post. Really good recognition from Richie, who's typically a perimeter shooter, to go down the block and exploit it. Well, there is the QR code there for courtside 1891. Use that courtside QR code where you can watch all the best live international basketball. And at the moment, the 19th edition of World Basketball's biggest stage, the 2023 FIBA Basketball World Cup, live on courtside. There is your QR code. Yeah, it looks relatively relaxed for a player that, you know, has quite struggled quite often. But, you know, do you think Carl Anthony Towns would find a bit more success if he gets the ball in the post as opposed to the perimeter? Yeah, I really think they're going to need to make that adjustment. He has a physical advantage over all the bigs for Italy. I think they're really dialed in on his perimeter game here. He needs to probably look to change it up. Gigi killing the screen again. Simply Signore Automatico from the mid-range. Yeah, great set there coming out of the, the quarter. Italy's got to feel good about their execution there. Dominicans now trailing here by eight points. Going to a handoff. Montero looking to isolate. Trying to go baseline, lost control. And you're wide open the corner. Three is up. No good. Eloy Vargas. One of the second chances. The offensive rebound's not dropping here for the Dominicans. Spaniolo now, looking for an opening, goes in, just gets the ball, ripped out his hands by Montero, and it's like taking candy from a baby. Another kick out, Feliz, can he get the three, three is up, three is good for downtown. Yeah, great play there from Montero, with the steal and finding Feliz there in transition. It's back to a five point deficit. Tani is just holding on to a slender lead. She's finding that handoff. Yolo has a mismatch here. They gotta feed the ball to the big man. Richie's got it by Feliz, but Gigi goes for a three. Doesn't get it. Well, good hustle there by Pajola. Both players now expect some decisions to go in their favor. And Yolo double crossover. Gamble's pulls up in the mid-range, but again, can't get it. Marcus. <laughs> It's not a case of butterfingers there, coach. Yeah, and uh, interesting Dominican Republic going to 1-5 switching there defensively. On a kick out, Feliz being closed out heavily. Montero finds Figueroa. Oh, looking for the penetration. Oh, Better look at the corner. Three is up, and again, it's rated three-pointers. Well, you've got to ask the question in Spanish. Que tiempo hace, hace jueve right now. The threes are just rated left, right, and center. Lead now, cut down to two points. Joey in the lane, Composure puts up the floater and finishes that one with ease. Yeah, really good patience there from Jola, waiting for the defender to get on his back and then finishing at the rim. No points is deficit. Find it for leads. This three point input has been so good so far. Montero kicks out the police again. Can he make it three in a row? Are you kidding me? Uh, right now, the Dominican Republic just putting on a showcase right now. Well, it's interesting. Italy staying in that really heavy gap help with Carl Anthony Towns out of the game. Dominican Republic making them pay with threes. Well, nice little love pass there to Spaniolo. The Italian fans cheering, I think, not because he's going to the free throw line, but. Finally, they believe that they've got the call they wanted, but I've yeah, got to give credit to our three referees. We have Gatta Shalins, Luis Castillo, and Yorgos Porzanides from Spain and Lavin. I mean, they've done a good job so far. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of intensity uh, to this game. Obviously, first place in the group up for grabs. And, you know, sometimes those games are difficult, especially with Coach Pazeko already a little heated and, and, and on them. Spagnuolo making the first free throw. You know, you like to see this contribution from the backcourt players from the Dominican Republic stepping up and making big three points. But, you know, you know this is a question to go ask as a coach. Now it's looking better. It's more structured. Penetration kickouts, higher percentage looks. Yeah, and, you know, it's interesting. When, when Carl Anthony Towns comes out of the game, they're going to have to play more as a team. You see better ball movement, guys sharing it, finding cutters like we just saw there. Well, rejection time by Melly. Well, Melly and Vargas getting into it. The referees need to calm this down. Good job by the officials. Well, that's an excellent job by our referee, Luis Castillo, there to step in because you can see there it was trash talk, but just calming the situation down and preventing it from getting any worse. Yeah, the two veterans there uh, tangled up, and then they got a few words for each other as they're coming down the court. You know what? I like to see two big athletes compete with each other. Well, there was a block shot. Melly said, no in mi casa, arriba Turchi. There's that play you can't see in the camera right now, fans. Melly and Vargas. You know, probably about half a meter away from each other, but they were joined. They were trash talking. That's fine, but even better, the referee said to them, hey, cut it out, get focused on the game, please. Well, you know, the game's been chippy. I think Coach Pazeko added a little, you know, fuel to the fire there. His guys, uh, you know, really feeding off of that energy. You can see all of them uh, a little more aggressive here. Well, because it's a double tentacle, it counts each other out, so nobody will shoot a free throw here, but because the Italians have possession, they'll get it sideline now. Eloy Vargas, one hell of a competitor. Last team he played for was in Venezuela for Trotro Mundos. Carl Anthony Towns checking back into the game for the Dominicans. Four times this beautiful country is featured here at the 2023 FIBA Basel World Cup. Gigi with a step back to the mid-range, and again, Signore Automatico. Well, he is feeling the confidence early, coach. Yeah, and, you know, great job of Italy exploiting those post mismatches against the smaller Dominican guards. Well, Melly just getting a call for the blocking foul, so moving the sideline ball to the Dominican Republic. That's going to be the second team foul against Missouri. 6.25 to go here in the second quarter. And that's where that technical now becomes big. You know, for anybody not familiar with international basketball, the technicals do count as personal fouls. So, uh, Melly needs to be careful he'll, careful here not to pick up his third. Nicolo Melly, right now, I mean, it's been his defensive hit, but they almost turned it over, but <laughs> just using the speed of quickness to save that for being a backcourt violation. Three seconds now for Police. It's a pull up for a deep, deep three. It's a poor shot by the Dominican Republic. They had no other choice with time winding down. We've been guided by Delgado. Italians looking to extend that lead. Gigi going down the middle, and again, one more time, Signore. Automatico, six points off for the mid range by the veteran. You see Tatomi going right back to that block where he has the size advantage. Towns trying to bully his way in the lane, just can't get it. Gigi tipping it out. Now the Italians looking to extend his potential to a 10 point lead again if they get a three point up. Gigi's got the mismatch. Gets fouled, and that's a third team foul against the Dominican Republic. Montero really can't afford to have that switch. Chen Garcia. Looks like he's going to make a change here. He does have a smaller lineup against the Missouri. Yeah, I'm surprised they're staying with this three-guard lineup. Tatomi has come down three times in a row, two baskets, and now drawing a foul. Clearly noticed the, the you know, mismatch he had down there. In Italy, that's where they're great. You know, they can adjust on the fly, see where their advantages are, and take, you know, make sure they're exploiting them. Italians find a Gigi. Gigi goes again for the mid-range. He misses one. Cap with the offensive rebound. Excuse me, no, Cap with the rebound. It's going to be an offensive foul against Akile Polonara. Well, nobody's going to win a box out fight against Carl Anthony Towns. Yeah, no question. And interesting now, they've gone to Pena at the four. This, this gives Cat an opportunity at the five to find the low post or set screens and hard roll, try to exploit his size down low. 
Toronto well, find a cat. Cat going in the lane. County gets us at one. Well, could that be the key play for Colin Anthony Towns and kickstarts his game into play? Yeah, and you see it there. Going to the spread pick and roll. Pena able to space things for them a little bit better. And now in that two-man game with Felice, they can be a really dangerous combo. Well, Cat has struggled early on. Every Italian player is not guiding him, ready to come over and help. But Mike Lilly, you can see the brute strength of Carl Anthony's Towns. I mean, he, I don't think there's any force in this arena right now that could stop him inside the key. No, no question. He has a size advantage over all the Italian bigs. Like seeing him getting down inside the paint, whether it's off of Bulls or by posting up. Cat unable to secure the three-point play. Remember, he had only one missed free throw the other night against the Philippines. He finds Simone Fontecchio. Fontecchio trying to isolate the post. Good defense again. That goes out of bounds. That will be back to the Dominican Republic. So great defense. And Che Garcia, well, he loves it. Yeah, and Italy continuing to find the post mismatches that they have from their wing players, playing out of a, a what we would call a floppy set, bringing their guards down, looking to post up. So I think as long as the DR stays small, they're going to continue to try to find those those post ups for their guards. Montero here in the backcourt. That ball screen goes right to the basket again, finishes the lamp, and now it is a three point ball game for the Dominican Republic. And that spread pick and roll really giving them some issues defensively. So, nice little change here from Coach Garcia. That's something we haven't seen so far in the game. The Dominican Republic, easy driver, no help side defense for the Italians. Yeah, and that's what that shooting does, right? Instead of that help being pulled in like they were earlier in the game, because the shooting's on the floor, these defenders a little more reluctant to come over and clog lanes. Well, it's interesting because they started the game so poorly in the Dominican Republic. You know, they couldn't get anything going. They were turning the ball over. And then it just became a half and puff, you know, transition game for them. What I'm so impressed about with Che Garcia, when he called that second timeout, something just kick-started their offense into gear. Well, I think it was a smart timeout. Uh, you know, they were heading for big, big trouble. You hate to use two in that moment, but I think it was the right decision. Polinaro is going to get fouled by Delgado. He's going to two free throws for the big man. Nice penetration by Fonsecchio. Akile Polinaro. He's going to play for Xiaofiris Gonis. Lithuanian LKL. To appreciate about this man is you know he is a big man but, you know he can definitely run the floor he'll give you everything in transition but you know one thing he likes to do is get his three-point shooting going yeah absolutely all of these italian bigs able to step out and knock down a three uh, italy going small now to try to match up with uh, the smaller lineup from the dr That's got it by richie that kicks out of delgado the baseline, there's a pump that goes up and another rejection. Well, Richie, one more time. Just with a denial. Italian rim protection right now becoming a solid insurance policy. Ciao ragazzi. No se benvenuti qui. Goodbye, vai via, get out of here. And you're wide open for three. Yeah, but again, Coach, nobody crashing the boards for the Dominican Republic. Yeah, and that's one of the trade-offs. You know, you've got shooters on the floor, a little less accustomed to crashing from those perimeter spots. Dominican Republic half of the Italians in a penalty, but it doesn't matter because Fontecchio. Well, Simone is going to go to the free throw line here for the three-point play. And you see Fontecchio in transition immediately backing Felice down. Italy knows that they have size matchups for their guards, and I think they're going to continue to look to exploit those. Well, Fontecchio putting a little bit of baby Gianluca Basile in his play, a former teammate of Gianmarco Pazzecco. Very great South Italian basketball. Daniel Menegan probably watching this game as well, supporting his core players. Fontecchio for sure. Probably he's going to be the face of Italian basketball for the next generation.
Dominican Republic right now. Need to stay in this game as Victor Lee is checking back into the game for them. But it's good to see him back. Remember, he had that shoulder injury against the, the Philippines, which we were, I was quite concerned there might have been a dislocation. But again, it's fantastic. The backdoor play goes up and speak up the superstar. Yeah, right on cue. Great baseline cut from Lee's, and that's what he does an excellent job of. If you turn your head, he's going to find the rim. Monsanto coming up one ball screen. Takes another three pointer. Can't get it. He's going to try to run in for a weak side rebound, but unable. Dominican Republic gets something now. Montero shifting, shaking, faking. Doesn't get it, but again, Montero is wide open there. Deep three by Cat. That's a big time three pointer. Well, he now moves up his side, his seven points. Well, Cat has to play with his confidence. He's got to keep making shots to the perimeter if they're going to get back in this game. Four three-point field goal so far, Carl Anthony Towns. There's another man who likes to shoot for the perimeter right now. Marcus Spisu responding down the other end. But he's got to get cooking as well, Coach. Yeah, and you know, the Dominican Republic will stay in those drops from their big. So if he can get going from the perimeter, that can be a problem for them in pick and roll. Well, through that game against Serbia in the FIBA Eurobasket last summer, Marcus Spisu was arguably the best player for the Italians. That's going to go out of bounds, but now will remain possession to the Dominican Republic. With six seconds left here on the shot clock, 2.22 to go. Montero just going out of bounds to try and save that one. Six seconds on the shot clock, six seconds to shoot. Here is the replay of the incident. Yeah, clearly coming off Akile of Polinara. Yeah, Lee's getting a little too deep there on that penetration, trying to find a drop off uh, with a lot of bodies in there. Well, Town's going all the way. They get a quick walking foul against Yazuri and Akile Polinara infuriated. I think they called another tentacle, I believe. Hey, coach, you got to ask you there. You can see Carl Anthony Towns is struggling, but, you know, was there any glimmer of a charge on that play? Well, I, I, I need to see the replay on that. There were certainly a lot of bodies in there when he, you know, when he penetrated. Uh, I could see why there would be frustration on the Italian side. It looked like he uh, just put his head down there. And obviously, uh, you know, Carl Anthony Towns maybe getting a little star, star treatment. But I'm curious to see, was the tech on Coach Pazeko? I mean, he did take the jacket off and throw it after the call. You can see him there uh, a little disheveled. And, and the referee's right away with a quick technical. So is that Coach Pazeko's second technical here? We're going to have to get an explanation from the officials. I think it was on Akile Polinara. But again, we'd have to double check him. Got another question. Where is John Marco Bezeko's tie? <laughs> I think everything was discarded, and, and there you go. You can see his frustration, and you know, obviously that was their game plan. They did such a great job of that in the first quarter of being shifted over in the gaps. They're anticipating these drives that Cat did against Gilas so much. So when they don't get those calls, it's going to be hard. But I, I think this might have been on Bezeko. I think, I think there's a chance here. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, you're right. He's out. Yep, he's gone. Shaking hands now with Daniel Sioni, the assistant coach of Dominican Republic. Pizzeco up at the occasion, shaking hands with everybody. This man is, a, I mean, he's incredible, isn't he? Well, you know, we, we talked about the fire, and uh, I think some of it maybe build it, uh, was building up from the first game in which he was subdued. But, you know, I understand his frustration there, but he's got to understand. I mean, he had been riding the officials almost nonstop from the, from the beginning of this game. So you know that they're looking at him. And when you show them up like that, you know, the, the coat being thrown, the huge hand gestures, international refs, you know, the, you see him still upset. Okay, sorry to cut you off. I think he's looking for Yanis Antetokounmpo right now to jump on him and say I love you, but Yanis is not here, John Marco. You gotta go, you gotta go to the changing room. Well, he's probably looking for the head of officials. And I, I, I mean, I get it. I understand his frustration. I, I, I don't agree with the call there, but he's gotta understand the situation. His, tim, his team's going to need him for this entire game. Uh, I think the, the emotions got the best of them there. Well, they're going to have to survive without their coach, but that's now the third team technical against the Italians. Italian fans now rallying behind the Azuri. Spisi, big three-pointer. Doesn't get this one. Towns with the rebound. Look 
Dominican Republic have never had the lead in this game. Not have they been able to tie it up since the Italians had a 12 0 lead, but now Feliz deep through in the corner. Not get it. Good hands on defense. Feliz able to save this one. But another foul committed by Fontecchio. This will send Montero to the free throw line for two shots. And, and those are game winning plays. You know, it might be subtle, but Feliz's sprint from the corner after he shot it. That's what leads to the turnover. So obviously Montero gets the deflection, but it's the hustle of Felice that comes up with the possession and then drawing the foul. Well, you just saw there, of course, Gianmarco Bazzacco just walking up and down the entrance to the arena. Yeah. Montero, as you mentioned, having a great season playing in the Spanish ACB. He's down now to a one-point ball game. Now goes with five points. Slight delay in game. I think the officials just need to reset the shot clock because it did go to 21. Yeah, big moment here. You know, a lot of momentum shift there. Obviously, the free throws from Coach Pazeco's ejection. But, uh, you know, Italy has really been in control of this game the whole half. So. If the DR could somehow find a way to get a lead at halftime, I think that's going to be really deflating for Italy. Well, the Dominican Republic have had three free throws off technical fouls. Montecchio pulls up for a three-pointer. Front eye can't get it. Stefano Tona trying to compete for it. Able to secure the rebound. Now they can take the lead for the first time with Montero. Still can't here away from the basket. Over to go, kicks out of Feliz. This baseline goes up and again finishes under pressure. And now the Dominican Republic have a one point lead. And the Azuri, they have to pull timeout. Yeah, great finish there from Lees. And, and nice adjustment from Carl Anthony Towns. He's recognizing that the, the shift help is there. Uh, you know, instead of trying to force these drives, he's now giving it up early, allowing the offense to move the ball and make the defense scramble. And you know, big moment here for that man. You know, as the lead assistant coach, uh, to be thrusted into this moment at the World Cup, uh, there's a lot of pressure there. And obviously, with Coach Pazeco, we've seen some of those fireworks before. Uh, but you know, you're never coming into a game expecting you're going to have to take over, especially this early in the game. Well, as you mentioned, of course, I mean, you know, haven't looked at those previous stats for the bench points. I mean, what could be the underlying factor that maybe could see one of these two teams take advantage? Well, you know, it's been a nice adjustment here from Carl Anthony Towns. I think he's realizing the shifts on him when he's on the perimeter, starting to move the ball, and then now they're keeping it moving. So if Italy's going to shift over like that, it's going to be harder for them to rotate and close out. Well, the first time of the game, the Azuri have trailed only one point. Remember, they led by 12 in the first few moments of the first quarter. Fontecchio baseline shift goes up and again. He's a little throw down there by Simone Fontecchio. And this is where he has to step up. You know, your stars need to take control when things are, are a little rattled for your group. Great play there from Fontecchio. For a deep three, and again, a poor choice. The Italians looking to extend their lead. Their offense has been like a roller coaster so far. We've seen in the first two games. Goes to Richie. Richie with a quick mid range. Can't get it. Uh, coach, if you're the Dominican Republic, you know, I've asked this question before. Why not stay Carl Anthony Towns in the low block? Yeah, you know, I think they had some success offensively when they went with that smaller unit. The problem was defensively they were struggling to defend the post. So maybe you can go back to that lineup and then now trap when Italy looks to take advantage of their size with their wings. Montero, deep three, right in the face of Polinaro. 
right to the hands, and that is going to be the end of the first half. Ladies and gentlemen, the Italians who got up to a 12-0 start in the early moments, now leading by only a slender one point, 39 to 38. Here in game day two of this Group A fixture, the 2023 FIBA Basel World Cup. Our coach, as usual with both these two teams, I just said this, it's been a roller coaster of emotions. Yeah, no question about that. Uh, you know, Italy really uh, coming in with a game plan of clogging lanes, not letting Cry Anthony Towns penetrate from the perimeter. I think there was a stretch there where the DR finally started making threes, but you see 20 three point attempts in the first half there. Uh, or, you know, sorry, I guess 15, but, uh, oh no, there it is, six for 20. So, you know, that's gonna be their game plan in attacking it. Uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see if Italy stays with that in the second half, or maybe starts showing a little few, you know, different looks there. Interesting, the Italians having more rebounds with the Dominican Republic, more assists, the way this game started, you wouldn't expect that kind of stat, of course, but credit to the Dominicans. Slowly, surely, but undeniably, they did find themselves back in this game. Yeah, I mean, I think the adjustment there, Carl Anthony Towns started releasing the ball, and then now these shifts have to close out. So you get them into those rotations, you keep the ball moving, you're able to find open shots for your teammates. Well, good to see Andreas Feliz leading the scoring so far here for the Dominicans, and that is a big, big shout out considering it's all been about that man there, the three time NBA All Star, Carl Anthony Towns. Well, Simone Fontecchio so far, seven points, shooting three for eight from the field. Cat three rebounds away already from a double-double. But, you know, right now, Cat's very comfortable on the perimeter. Well, you know, one for five from three right now. Uh, we've talked about it a little bit. I'd love to see him find ways to get into the paint, use his size advantages there. Yeah. With the Italians right now, they play a very beautiful, organized, structured offense. But, you know, things just don't click for them. Is it a confidence factor? You know, go back to that game against Angola. If they make the first three-pointers, could we see them look a little bit more on defense? Because you know fully, when your offense isn't working, that affects your mentality on defense. Yeah, no question. Uh, you know, once again, kind of struggling from the perimeter. They did find some post mismatches that they liked and, and went to, but there hasn't been a lot of that penetration and kicking, finding open perimeter three-point shooters that we saw leading up to this tournament. Well, that's a key input in the first quarter. Second quarter slowing down a bit, but things were getting a little bit intense between Eloy Vargas and some of the Italian front court players. Well, Vargas and Melli picking up a technical foul early on, but look at this dime there, but the block coming from Melli and Signore Automatico. What a big time play that was from him. About well, 20 years from now, the Italians are gonna need to find a completely new team to surround Gigi Dutomio. He's never retiring. <laughs> well, you know, we had a feeling he would have some moments like this throughout the World Cup. Uh, you know, obviously can still shoot it with the best of them. But, you know, as a veteran player, recognized the mismatch he had in the post, went to it immediately, got three great possessions for them. Well, Dominican Republic, like that dribble handoff, finishing with a pick and roll, but look at the backdoor dive coming from Victor Lees. Well, it's good to see him playing after we assumed he had a serious shoulder injury against the Philippines. But ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back in just under 12 minutes for the second half between Italy and the Dominican Republic. Whatever our gender, color, belief, or capability, we are all on the same team. We have the power to change lives through basketball. Together, Together we, we are, are stronger. stronger. No, no matter, matter your, your origin, origin, basketball can bring everyone together. Basketball for good. Now Jones, that top score from the NBA G League alley oops Oh my goodness gracious! Well, good evening, Manila. What a way to start here from South Sudan. in the pass lane, almost comes up, and Mulek goes up. Oh! Garuba from the weak side just, again, defends the ring. Thiago pushes, comes off the ball screen in transition. Through his legs, a little bit of showtime for two is good. And welcome to the World Cup party, Brazil. Yeah, great job, nice start. He played in 10 games 
for for Brazil during the qualifiers for them to make it to this tournament, averaging just under 15 points. Abbas had a look, doesn't score. Set the comfort, drives in. Are you kidding me? And one, what a shot. <laughs> Shoulder down, head down. Extra pass wow. made his buddy Toby. Uh, the vision, the execution. Zaze back to her feet. It's a nice finish, but again, it's that man, Sinsaze, setting it up. Good call, gets Shengalia. Neto into the lane behind the back. Oh, what a throw down. And you can see Coach Demir, do I take the time out, do I not? 10-4 start for Brazil, and it's all been at the ring. One more, I will let it fly for Wow! Symbolic of the shooting we've seen from Venezuela this first half from the three point line 12 of 25 in the three quarter leg bomb, nothing but net. but also in the international basketball world forever.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the second half. This action between the Dominican Republic and Italy here in the 2023 FIBA Barca World Cup. Well, coach, a lot to talk about here in the first half, but, you know, a bit of a change in the coaching for the Italians. Yeah, you know, uh, a lot of pressure there for uh, Ido Canoli having to step up for Coach Pizzacco's ejection. Uh, we've seen it before, obviously, against Serbia at, at the Eurobaskets. Uh, so I know he's he's been in this position, but uh, you know in a one point game, a lot of pressure there. Well, you can see the Dominican Republic players. You know, Carl Anthony Towns has taken him a while to get into this game, of course. Yeah, and you know I think he's made some uh, some of the correct adjustments. Italy is going to be shifted over in in their gap help. He's going to have a hard time getting to the rim from the perimeter. So either he has to become a facility player for them or look to get down into the low block a little bit more. Big offensive input there by Andres Feliz, having spent last season with Colvin Sue Padalona in the ACB. 15 points. I mean, it's been crucial to help with Colin Anthony Towns in the Dominican Republic. Yeah, and you know, he really got things going when they needed it most. Obviously, the 12-0 start for Italy uh, at the beginning of the game. It was Feliz that stepped up, settled them down, and got them back into this. The Italians now without their head coach, of course, their assistant coach, really coming into the frame, stepping up big time. Eduardo Casolone. I mean, it's just enough. He's actually used to being in this position, which, you know, is no disrespect to Marco Bazzacco, but here's one thing I want to give a shout out to one Miro Balan, who is another Croatian sensation. And if you go on his Twitter, he has just recently said that he is used to Bazzacco being ejected eight times when he played for Bazzacco at Dinamo Sassari in Italy in the Basel Champions League. Whenever Bazzacco has been ejected, they have won the games. I mean, could history re re rewrite itself? Big shout out to Miro Balan, another Croatian sensation, but you know, this may be normal, a normality for the Italians. Well, we've seen it before. I mean, this team feeds off of Coach Pazeko's energy. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, I, I think it might have gotten the better of him so early in the game. But, you know, Ido's ready, uh, ready for the moment and certainly has been there before. Well, again, a big shout out to Mirabal as we mentioned. Kako Se Brate. Well, there you can see the QR code for the official FIBA Basel World Cup app. Download it on your smartphone, your tablet, or your Android to get all the best stats, highlights, and news that matters to you most. The official 2023 FIBA Basel World Cup app. Download it today. Use that QR code. Well, there you can see the Italians, you know, getting off to a 12-0 start early on, but what is something they need to change in their identity offensively? Well, you know, they had some success finding those post mismatches, uh, you know, with their wings. I think they have to be ready to react to what the DR puts on the floor. So, you know, Coach Garcia has gone with a lot of different looks and lineups. When they go small in their backcourt again, they can go and try to exploit that. And in fact, you see it here with Montero getting the uh, start uh, instead of Quinones. So maybe we'll see a little bit more of that. Fontecchio trying to find uh, some post, post matchups there. Delgado playing the, fi the five here for the Dominican Republic. Carl Anthony Town staying in the power forward role. Still interesting out. Trying to be a call for a traveling violation. Once again, you know, you know, we've talked about this time and time again. And I sound like a broken record. Why not put Cat in the post? Yeah, I, I, I think they need to make that adjustment. You know, credit to Italy. Uh, they've really been dialed in on their game plan. But anytime he catches on the perimeter, defenders are going to be pulled in. So he has to at least know that he's going to be a passer from those positions, not somebody able to put it on the deck and get to the rim. Well, you saw the 
on the floor for the Italians. Marcus Spisu goes for a quick three-pointer. I get it. The Italians have Stefano Tonic, Achille Polinara, Nicolo Mele, Simone Fontecchio. Talents thought about taking a three-pointer. This time he does take it again. No problem for Cat. That's a scary sign for the Italians if Carl Anthony Towns gets his rhythm going from the three-point line. Trying to get it going with a pick and roll here. Trying to make contact with Montero. Spisu unable to get the ab one, but he'll go to the free throw line. But yeah, look at this set offense here. Go an entry to the wing, trying to get a more of us. So what do you make of this hot court set? Yeah, you know, a lot of uh, what we call slice action, those shuffle screens for the wings coming through. Uh, but DR in those drops. I mean, if Spisu can get going as a shooter, uh, that could be something they could exploit. Maku Spisu currently the free throw line. Another former player of Dinamo Sassari. Well, makes both free throws, tying the game up before you want a piece. Dominican Republic had a thriller, not quite the thriller in Manila here in this arena, but it was in the Philippine arena against the local team, Gilas Filipinas. The Italians had a mini game against Angola. Well, Cat just well, somebody called the principal coach. We have a bully on the court. Cat play bully basketball. And that's what he can do. He's just so much bigger than any of the Italian bigs. If he can find his way uh, around the rim, he's going to be a handful. One hour just short on the three point. Getting under his, getting his feet set under a shot at the moment. Looking very flat here. Dominican Republic, the biggest lead they've had so far in the game. Two points. We'll extend this to a two possession game. Montero trying to use a ball screen. Back to a play, finds leaves, kick out. Finds Belize now, pump fakes, takes it, big three, got it! Big time three point up. And now, La Republica Dominicana with their biggest lead of the game. Tally Ezekiel Potion now. Stefano Tone, he tries to respond to that beautiful spot set by Stefano. Yeah, that's a huge response from Tonutz, not typically known as a shooter, more of a driver, but big shot there. This is what you want to see here at the FIBA Basel World Cup. Two powerhouses, respectfully, Dominican Republic, top team in the FIBA America Cup zone. And the Italians, two-time FIBA Eurobasket champions. In the corner, got it by Melli. There's a foul against Nicolo Melli. Again, you mentioned it, that technical foul, but look at the back door play, the more reversal. Find it for Lees. Pump fakes up in the air, and in the end, that is Muchos Caracas. Yeah, big shot there from Felice. One of the better possessions they've had, moving the ball around. Again, Cat as a facilitator instead of a scorer there is going to be important. Going to the big man, holding a double team. Nice kick in the corner, finding Victor Leeds. He takes a three, and again, it is a <laughs> And Nessa Garcia puts his hands up in the air. Dominican Republic, the confidence here with their three-point shooting. Yeah, great kick out there. Again, if, if he's going to be that facilitator, they're going to be hard to defend. Italy committing multiple defenders every time Cat touches the ball. Well, they won an unsportsmanlike like foul court against Carl Anthony Towns. The response there, um, assistant coach, now head coach, Eduardo Cataloni. This may get up great. No, maybe not. Well, I think it would be a technical. I, I, I think what they didn't like was the swipe here. So, the, you know, the whistle had already been made. You see Cat making the swipe down on the ball, and sometimes that can escalate things. Uh, so, if anything, it would be a technical uh, after the whistle if, if they decided to do something here. Well, there was a, an aggressive swipe. Now, going back to this conversation we had yesterday in the game between Serbia and China, you know, to me, that would be a regular foul in the NBA. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, of course. Oh, no question. I think the foul was never in, in question there. I think what they didn't like was after the foul was called, Cat makes that swipe down the ball. Uh, you know, I can see how uh, sometimes I can make things a little chippy. Tipco still struggling here for the perimeter, but great shooters will keep firing. Just needs to find a little bit of rhythm, a bit of confidence. One point leads the Dominican Republic. Emotionally, this game has definitely changed in their favor. This has been on fire so far. Goes back to her again. Another kick out. Losing the quarter. Another three. 
Can't get it, but Delgado comes up with it. He gets fouled, and he's going to go back to the charity stripe at the moment. And Corazon Dominicana, that's what you are seeing. The Dominican hot is just being exemplified. As now the Italians have to call timeout. Now, does Cat give the assist there? Yeah, he really should. And, and you see the offensive rebounding starting to come in play. I think this is where their big advantage is. The size of their front court against the Italian bigs. Love seeing those guys getting around the rim, making things difficult for Italy. Also, the DR really doing a nice job moving the ball on the perimeter now. Let's go and listen now to what these two coaches have to say in this timeout. Okay. Prossima azione in attacco, giochiamo flash lato con Simo e Aki per prendere in mezzo Tau. Ok? In attacco non dobbiamo avere fretta di andare a prendere la partita. Ha ragione Gianmarco, eravamo più venti con questo. Facendo le nostre cose in difesa, aiutandoci in difesa e in attacco muovendo la palla. Non prendiamoci dei tiri per fare dei canestri per andare a prendere la partita subito, è lunghissima. Andiamo con Calvo e Diaz, anche spalla, anche giro, non ci sono i Well, the Italians started this game with a 12-0 lead, and they looked like they were going to sweep this game away. But now the tables have been turned. Again, use that QR code to get all the best news, highlights, and stats that matter to you most here the 2023 FIBA Basel World Cup. Download it on your Android tablet or smartphone, but use that QR code, ladies and gentlemen. This is the 19th edition of FIBA Basketball's highest competition. But a chance now for Angel Delgado to make this an eight-point lead at Garcia. Well, the charismatic champion of 2015 at the FIBA America Cup. He's got to be loving what he's seen from his plays. Yeah, I mean, great response. Obviously, uh, not the start they wanted to this game, but I think they've really found some momentum here with their ball movement. Uh, and of course, the bigs uh, being a force on the offensive glass. Delgado just put the three-point play. 6.30 to go here in the third quarter. The Italians need to be together. The saying is, in Boca Lupo, in the mouth of the wolf. And that's what my grandmother used to say to me. And that's what they need. Fonsecchio goes in. The contact will go to the free throw line. The foul is going to be against Carl Anthony Towns. Yeah, you see uh, Italy going back to that diamond set. Uh, they've been posting their wings out of that uh, in the first half. This time, Fatecchio to hitting the sideline, pick and roll, and getting downhill there, drawing the foul. Well, Carl Anthony Towns. That's his second personal foul so far, but you know, he has had a very good game. 15 points from the three-time NBA All-Star. Seven points, still the difference. That is the Italians' first miss free throw of the game there from Fontecchio. Goes in and out, they pull the charge gets cut. He just throws Achille Polinaro to the ground like a rag doll. Well, you know, interesting uh, adjustment here, so. DR has moved Cat to the wing uh, in the hopes of pulling away some of these help defenders. So a little wing isolation there, trying to see if he could get dribble penetration. Uh, and, and in this case, just really good one-on-one -on -one defense from Polinara. Well, he's not getting away with that one. <laughs> no, sir, whatsoever. He's <laughs> finding an opening now. Pulls him in a little teardrop. Doesn't get it. Cat fighting for the up rebound. Delgado comes up with it. Montero. Pushes one. But essentially, here the Dominican Republic could have a double digit lead if they get another three pointer. Okay, thinks about it. Guy by Polinara. Mines for losing the corner. Another three pointer. Can't count it. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. That could be the potential play here for Philly. Yeah, and Spisu uh, helping a little too far off the corner there against Cat. Uh, also caught with uh, a little bit of gamesmanship. Oftentimes you see guys on those late closeouts get a little tap to the to the leg and try to throw the rhythm off of the shooter, but the official right on top of this one. Well, Feliz has been cooking right now. He is just simply on fire, unconscious from the Premier League, Dominican Republic. We talked about the Italians living in Don. They have 10 three-point field goals collectively of a team, but Felid has six. Yeah, no question. They've uh, they've come out this half really shooting the ball well from three. 
You know, if they continue to move the ball with these heavy defensive shifts, they're going to find really good looks. So, you know, that game plan of Italy uh, really effective in the first half when Carl Anthony Towns was trying to put it on the deck and force these drives. But I think he's realized now if he'll move the ball, he's going to have open teammates all over the perimeter. Italians making a change, bringing back in Gigi Dottome. He's on to convert the four-point play. Italians trailing by double digits. Spacey walks the whole screen, pulls up in the mid-range. Right now, unable to hit anything. I mean, there's plenty of time left in this game. We're just under halfway here in the third quarter, but right now you're seeing a lack of confidence. From the Italians, Delgado off the pick and roll, and again, it's converting. Yeah, great, great roll and finish there. Uh, Dominican Republic with that small three-guard lineup. So let's see if Fontecchio or maybe Tatomi comes back into the post against them. Fontecchio find a GG. It's been good so far for the mid-range. Especially turning, a little bit of a fake there, but can't get it. Goes out of bounds, and now we'll go back to the Dominican Republic. Well, oh, Coach, what do they need right now? I mean, we can, we can talk about confidence, identity, but what needs to happen for the Italians? Well, you know, I think they have to uh, start getting the ball to their superstar. So Fontecchio, a little bit out of rhythm. Uh, I, I think they really have to make him a focal point. The Dominican Republic matching the Italians' biggest lead of the game with 12. Right now, a bucket here, a special three-pointer would be monumental. There's the penetration, the kick out. That's going to be too short. Delgado offensive rebound. The putback is good. And now it's a 14-point ball game. And again, you see Carl Anthony Towns passing the ball when these heavy shifts come over, putting the defense in rotation. It's only finding Vontecchio. He's got to make this one. Steps up. Big top three-pointer. And Simone leading the Azuri. Nice, uh, easy set there, just a little quick widescreen action. Uh, but I think they're going to need more of that. Fontecchio's going to have to step up here and uh, try to chip away this lead. Dominican Republic need to keep the momentum going forward. The Italians just need to be collectively one unit to try and stay in this one. Montero finds Carl Anthony Towns. Cap with the three. Three is up, and at the moment, Coach, make that three-pointer number 11 for the Dominican Republic. Yeah, and they've really been on fire here. Five for eight in the second half from three, but creating great looks with their ball movement. Well, the foul is going to be against Mendoza, Rigoberto. Come <laughs> Towns. And jumps up to the ozone layer, ready to reject that one. Yeah, you know, you see Italy coming back to those post-ups for their wings. I think if they have patience with that approach, that, that, that's a good look for them. You know, the DR keeps coming with these small backcourts. Uh, one of these wings is going to have a physical matchup uh, that Italy's going to like. Well, Fontecchio right now just needs to go into a telephone box somewhere here in Manila and just put on that Italian Superman flag because at the moment, somebody needs to lead this team. It's got to happen from somewhere. Expo free throws. Maybe uh, maybe a zone look here after the free throw. Let's see if they go to a 2-3 here, try to change up the rhythm of the game. We're trying to put Carl Anthony Towns at the high post. Goes into a baseline now. Feliz, six three-pointers. Montero, range off the backboard, can't get it. Tanya's need to break it. Can they get something? Only down the middle, finds the Nola pass and throws it down with two hands. And that's a good transition play from the Azuri. Yeah, really nice call there from Coach Castelloni. Going to this zone look, they need something that's just going to change the rhythm of the game. The Dominican Republic have been feeling really good offensively. The zone could be a mental game changer here for the Italians. But Delgado pump fakes. Well, missed that one. So far, it's working. So we now can cut this down to single digits. Fontecchio, give it go, Richie goes in. That's just beautiful yeah. basketball. Yeah. It looked like the Dominican Republic defenders coach were just chasing Fontecchio, but then they forgot about Richie. Defensively now, the Italians going on a 6-0 run. A terrible call for a bull screen. 
Who's down the middle? Finds Mendoza. Pump fakes, makes the contact, and again, a costly foul committed, but that's going to be on the ground. And only the fourth team foul against the Italians. Yeah, but you can see here, this, this zone has uh, the Dominican Republic a little out of sorts. So, you know, really nice uh, nice decision here from Coach Castelloni. They needed something to change up the rhythm of the game, and I, I think this zone is working well for them right now. It looks like a timeout is going to be here against, well, four. That was a throwdown. Well, Melly just threw it down with a little bit of no regard. <laughs> Both these two teams will talk in some moments early. Let's go and listen to what the coaches have to say to their players. Because you know they talk about basketball being a team game. Well, let's listen now to. Well, here's some of the replays. So the Dominican Republic right now only have five players on the stat sheet. A combined total of 39 points between Carl Anthony Towns and Andreas Feliz. Italians, almost nine players have been on the stat sheet so far. Yeah, and you know that's really the uh, Italian style of play. Uh, you know, always getting contributions from multiple players. Uh, but I think uh, you know this zone has has done a good job of kind of stifling that two-headed monster. So let's see uh, what their adjustments are coming out this time out. Dominican Republic led by 14 points. So far it's been cut down to eight. He's six three points so far. Make it seven. Oh, he is looking like a Dominican Stephen Curry here in the moment. Well, you know, when you got a guy that hot right now, sometimes it's as simple as give him the ball and get out of the way. Montero with the steal now. They have numbers here. 11 point lead to the Dominican Republic. Vargas goes in. He gets fouled. A big responsibility for Eloy Vargas checking into the game, of course, giving Carl Anthony Towns a bit of a breather. Yeah, and that was a really tough catch and finish. You know, to, to be that size and run the lane and catch that in traffic, I don't think people realize how difficult that was. Well, Nicolo Mele, definitely frustrated so far here this evening. Picks up his fourth personal foul, so he has to go to the bench. It's been a very tough night for him. Yeah, that's uh, obviously a big foul there on Melli. Uh, Italy choosing to go uh, small here with, with Melli picking up that fourth foul. Vargas missing the first free throw here for the Dominican Republic. That's only their third missed free throw so far. The Italians have only missed one. They're nine for 12 for the charity stripe. Well point lead to the Dominican Republic. Montecchio so far here on the ball. Got it by Mendoza. Rigoberto. Montecchio goes in again. He had a good look, but couldn't finish it. Braga secures the rebound. A minute and 30 to go in the third quarter. The Italians staying in that 2-3 zone. And Tristan now, they don't really have a, well, there's a high post with Pena. Offensive fouls gonna be called here against Eloy Vargas. Yeah, really good seal down low, but I think the arms just got up a little high there. Maybe caught Tatomi uh, under the chin. As a coach, you see where he cemented that position. Would you have liked to see him go to the double block? Because at some point, you might have the fear of getting a three-second call. Well, I think he was doing the right thing. I think, you know, again, I think his arms just got a little too high there. Uh, you know, I think it's a good seal, though, otherwise. Signore Automatico, one more time. Well, every contribution now for the Italians. Top of the key now. Vargas trying to seal off against the Tomei. Now we're under 10. 
And he goes for a three-point. He'll put it up again. Nothing is going wrong for the Dominicans here from the three-point line. Yeah, they've been lights out here in the second half. Pena, of course, one of their best shooters. Uh, a big look there from him. It's actually three-pointed number 13. My apologies, I had it wrong. Richie tries a three-pointed. Nothing dropping for the Azuri. Goes out of bounds, but that will be the Italian's ball with a fresh 14 on the shot clock. I mean, the crazy part about it is the Dominican Republic have 13 three-pointers, but it's only a 13-point ball game. Yeah, I mean, you, you got to think at some point it cools off a little bit. Uh, but they've really, uh, you know, outside of that beginning of the first quarter, found a rhythm offensively. Well, it's going to be a backcourt violation. Polinara trying to get to Dutome. Right now, it's soul searching here for the Italians. They need to dig deep. You can see the body language of these players. Yeah, and they have to remember too. You know, let's let's go back to the beginning of this game. So, 12 nothing lead. You know, the Dominican Republic able to claw back from that. There's still a ton of time here. So having that perspective uh, for the Italian squad is going to be important heading into this fourth quarter. Now three seconds difference between the game clock and the shot clock here for the Dominicans. Enough time to dribble down for the very last possession, possibly. Montero with the ball in his hands. Mendoza now trying to go baseline. Great help side defense by Polinara. Well, the finish here would be strong for the Italians. Fontecchio, corner three, takes it. And hits the side of the backboard and nothing working here for the Italians. And they've got one more quarter to try and turn this around. The Dominicans so far, as I mentioned right now, they are playing with El Corazón Dominicana. The Dominican heart is just prevailing way too much here. In the case of in the mouth of the wolf. And Volca Lupo for the Italians, but you know, it's just, it's just a very emotional game. Yeah, no question. I think that last place where it sums up uh, that quarter for them. So, you know, really nice pass from Pajola and transition and Fontecchio getting a look he would normally make, but just, you know, can't can't knock it down right now. 17 field goals with inside the rainbow for the Italians, but 13 three-pointers. That has been the ultimate difference in this game so far. Andreas Feliz find it. Colin Anthony Towns, hesitation, but no problem for the three-time NBA All-Star. Just, it was almost a contagious three-point shooting scroll here from these Dominican players. Once one player made it, just became, you know, everybody went viral from the perimeter. Yeah, and you know, a big part of that, though, was, was the cutting and ball movement like we see here. So, you know, I think once they realized that they had advantages uh, beyond Cat trying to put the ball on the deck, a lot of these open shots were created then. Well, again, Cat now, and that's what you like there. When he gets inside the paint, the defense crashes on him, and that's what's led to an opening for so many perimeter shots at such a high percentage look. Yeah, and that's been the difference. You know, in the, that first quarter, I think, uh, you know, Cat was really looking to try to make things happen with the dribble. Had a ton of success doing that against Philippines, so why not? But, you know, he's done a nice job adjusting his game. The defense is going to be in heavy gaps like that. That means teammates are open. Well, use that QR code to get courtside 1891, the official platform brought to you by FIBA for all international hoops. Use that QR code. Right now it is a 2023 FIBA Basel World Cup, the 19th edition of international basketball's highest level. Now, Coach, I'm going to ask you a question here because the first few minutes of the fourth quarter are going to be ultimate for the Italians. Do you kind of throw the rhythm out of the game or do you put a bit of full court pressure and try to play a bit of mind games here with the Dominicans. Yeah, you know, that's always a tough, tough decision. They had some success with the zone. Problem with the zone is it takes some of that intensity away from the group. I think with this younger backcourt right now with Pajola and Spagnola in, I, I would like to see them up, extending their pressure, see if they can force some turnovers. Well, they can see the two NBA players, so both the Italians and the Dominican Republic, Tom Anthony Towns and Simone Fontecchio. Two points in the first quarter. The count is at eight points in both the second and the third, and that's what's led to such a dominant performance here. He's only had a wide open look. He's so unable to get that one going. He just wanted down. Spagnolo coming off the ball screen. Three seconds down. Kicks out to Tome. Corner three takes it. Don't I can't get it. Vargas with a rebound. Only a 
13 point ball game still, but can Andreas Feliz, 24 points so far tonight. About going for that three pointer. Two seconds down, Montero. Has to put up a little floater. And Vargas with a tip, and again, the Italians failing to box him out. Yeah, you're starting to see that dominance on the O boards that we saw in their first game. Big size advantages uh, in their front court right now. Really going for a post up, and that's a much better response there. Making most of the mismatch guided by Montero. And again, Italy exploiting those size advantages in the backcourt, uh, you know, something I would expect them to continue to do. Two, three zones still played. Trying to play with Eloy Vargas at the high post. And you're running baseline to baseline. Montero again, trying to dish off, and it's another turnover. Yeah, I mean, the 2-3 has been working. Problem is, it's going to eat a lot of clock. Uh, you know, will they continue to stick with that or not? We'll have to see. He's having gone on a 4-0 run. It's midway through the third quarter. A little bit another post up. Finds Polinari. He's got to make this three. Three is up, but again, it's all too short. They are content to uh, eat some of this clock, be patient with their sets. Uh, obviously familiar with the 2-3 look now. Let's see what they run here. We have six seconds. Montero going for a Hail Mary through the step back. Once again, that goes out of bounds. Well, Vaga saves it. And that's going to be a fresh 14. And as you mentioned, yeah, patience needs to be the key for the Dominican Republic. Yeah, I think they're they're really thinking about taking the air out of the ball right now. Well, the Italians had their last donut, up, but nobody cool box out. And that came back to bite them. 16-point deficit and make that three-pointer number 14 for the Dominican Republic. Molinari going all the way. Doesn't get the ad one, but a good move there by the big man. Yeah, you know, I think uh, the, the DR right now really going to be patient with their offense. Uh, you know, trying to see how much time they can get with Cat on the bench. A good take there from Polinara, but uh, you know, as effective as the zone has been for them, I just think with the amount of time in the game right now, it's going to be hard for them to continue to just drop back, allow the DR to eat clock the way they've been doing. Well, that play, the first three-point of Montero took up. You know, they wanted to allow roll out of bounds. Vargas just played with a little bit more desire to keep it in bounds. You know, 44 percent from the perimeter. You got to say to yourself, that might be the difference in this game that sees who wins this one. No question. I mean, the Dominican Republic has shot the lights out, especially second half, uh, and it seems like the few times they've missed, they've come up with that O board as well. Well, our baseball free throws. Back oh, coming back in the game, Eloy oh, Vargas. Surprised we haven't seen a full court pressure tied to this, you know, so maybe a 2-2-1 falling back into that 2-3, but I think they got to find a way to you know, speed the tempo a little bit, maybe force a turnover here or there. Hard to just sit back in that zone right now, especially with the way uh, the DR shooting the ball. When the Italians went to this 2-3 zone in the third quarter, they saw themselves offensively going to 6 0 run, but you know, Coach, you're going to ask you, when a team is shooting 44% of the perimeter, and they're still getting good looks when they move the ball, how would you stay in the 2 3 zone? Well, you know, I think I think it was a good call to change the pace at that point in the game, but I don't really see the corner three here, but you no, know, I think the Dominican Republic has found their comfort level against it and are able to eat a lot of shot clock on every possession. Iola in the mismatch here, got it by Montero. Spin baseline, kind in the help side. Stefano Tonin now looking for the opening. Italians. Molinaro's got to think about shooting this one. He hasn't made a three so far tonight. It continues to struggle for downtown. And you see uh, the DR walking the ball up again. Nestor Garcia put his hands up and then down, saying, slow it down. Making a good <laughs> penetration pass. Montero, deep three. Can't get it. It's me with a rebound. The Italians still trailing by 14 points. Just hit the mismatch, got it by Montero. Down the middle. Gigi now, another three point. Can he get this one? But everything hitting the front eye for the Missouri. And you can see uh, once again the DR is going to be content walking the ball up, eating a lot of clock, probably looking to uh, some late clock pick and roll here. 7-0 on the shot clock, Mendoza. 
talking about shooting something here. Let's pull up for Hail Mary 3 and Muchos gracias, Senor Mendoza. Cut out three play. Now it's a 17 point ball game. And Daniel Sioni, the assistant coach, and Cher Garcia. I mean, this is from no man's land. Right with a hand in his face. Buenas noches. La Republica Dominicana. That might be for you. Yeah, big three there for Mendoza. And that's kind of been their zone buster. They've been content to just move the ball around the perimeter when they got to late clock situations, putting the ball in the hands of their guards and letting them make a play on their own. Let's go and listen now to Eduardo Catalone, the assistant coach, taking over head coach duties due to the departure of John Marco Pozzacco. Well, last time John Marco Bezzecca was ejected for the Italians, it was against Serbia last summer, the FIBA Eurobasket. And the infamous moment when he found out his team won, he jumped up one. Yanis answered to Kupo and said, I love you, Yanis. But remember, there he is, Bezzecca, as he was leaving, as Miro Milan. The Croatian sensation put on Twitter when he played for Bezeko at Dinamo Sassari eight times. Coach Bezeko was ejected and the team never lost. Could that record be broken here today? He's trying to find Melly. Good seal off by the big man. It's going to be second team down for the Dominican Republic in the fourth quarter by 17 points. Yeah, good seal there from Melly. He's been on the bench a long time after picking up that fourth foul. Uh, but Italy's going to need to do things quickly here. Well, Tony off the inbound, gets a three-point. That's what the Italians need. Belief now, five minutes and ten seconds to go. Plenty of time left. Yeah, there certainly is. I'm still surprised at the pickup points. You know, they've been content and, and dropping back to the half court. I think at some point they're going to have to extend their pressure, see if they can force a turnover here or there. Download a cat. cat. Got it by Polinara. Not only getting ready for the help. Going for the fadeaway on the baseline. Doesn't get it. But the Italians are going to make a comeback. They've got to do it within five minutes. Fontecchio wide open. Doesn't get it. He has struggled intensely here from the field. Yeah, and these are looks he normally makes. Uh, really struggling. One for seven from three for the game. A lot of frustration there for uh, Fontecchio. It is the Italians leading the score. And in the lane goes into the bank roll. Easy little finish there. And right now it's too easy here for the Dominicans. Yeah, and that's got to be their offense with Pena at the four, spacing the floor out. You can get Towns on these rolls off a of pick and roll. Tony looking to go back door. Spisu kicks out to Melli. Down the middle, goes in with a little dream hook. And again, a nice little finish there by Nicolo Melli. That's what the Italians need, people to step up right now, give some offensive input. Still a 14-point deficit. Now goes for a quick three, but no foul pulls. 3.49 to go. Not after Towns felt that there was contact. Yeah, that's not really what you want to see from the Dominican Republic, so they've had a lot of success with patience, working the ball around. Instead of here, we see Carl Anthony Towns coming down uh, with the early three-point attempt. Well, I wonder now if Che Garcia is trying to go to a coach's challenge. So I think, yeah, he's going to use his coach's challenge here. And have a look at the replay here, coach. Well, yeah, definitely there's contact there. Yeah, I think if they do go to the monitor, uh, they will see that. I'm not, not sure if that's going to happen, though. Well, definitely, Carl Anthony Towns. It was contact from Achille Polonara. So, yeah, he's going to use his coach's challenge. Quite clearly, as we saw in the replay, Achille Polonara definitely made contact yes, we have the coach's with Carl Anthony Towns' forearm. For the out of bounds. 
Uh, you know, if they overturn this decision, the Italian fans in this arena, okay, you're going to uh, Let's go listen to what the officials have to say. You cannot do anything point more. Point so the challenge is unsuccessful. We go with the white ball. Yeah, yeah I think I think it's important to note yeah, so here, they, they can't listen, go back and create a foul they didn't call. Agree, but we cannot change the out of bounds. Okay. And we cannot give the foul, okay? okay. It's my bad, sorry. Yeah, the change has not been made. Now, again, explain that to our viewers, of course. They can't go back and make the create the foul that wasn't there, or that was there, of course. Yeah, no, and that was in. You heard the official say at the end, it was my bad. So, you know, clearly when they went to the replay, they can see the foul, but that's not something that you can overturn. So the only thing that they could challenge was possession of the ball, hoping that maybe he had deflected it. Well, could that be a bit of limelight here for the Italians? Tonnen made his last three-pointer. Can't get this one. Shoot the offensive board, but a foul is going to be called. It's the Dominican Republic on the box out. That is going to be on the Dominican Republic's number 24, Figueroa. And that's their 13th hour, 339 to go. Well, Tony was wide open. Species does get the ball to him. Fonteco, another three pointer, steps up. Just can't get it to drop. That goes out of bounds. That will remain possession to the Italians. Yeah, I don't know about that call. I think if they had the challenge, maybe that's the one they would want to use it on. But, uh... Yeah, that's tough to see on that angle. We'll see Lonnie Fontecchio battling here. Towns with the rebounds. Slowly but surely, and unquestionably, the light is at the end of the tunnel. With that light, you can see a Dominican Republic flag because they have been phenomenal so far. He's down the middle, kicking this one out. Oh, good defense by Spisu. That numbers hit. Spisu goes behind the back, finds Tone, and that's a beautiful transition. Nice response from the Azuri. And, and that's what they have to do. They've got to extend their pickup points, pressure the ball a little bit more, try to force a few turnovers, see if they can get some quick, easy baskets. Under three minutes. The transition play makes it a 12 point ball game. The foul is going to be called against Nicola. No, that's not a bad foul, but again, well, that, no, sorry, it is a bad foul. That's his fifth one. I was going to say it's only the first team foul, but he's gone. Yeah, no, that's. Uh... That's tough. A little, uh, little over aggressive there in his denial. I think Kat does a good job of selling the foul, but uh, you know, certainly having him out of the game hurts. Well, that's what we saw from the Italians in the first few moments, getting defensive stops but converting those turnovers with the transition points. And we see here, uh, you know, Kat mixing it up for Colonara as well. Pull another foul here against Akile Polinara. Akile Polinara in the tough duty matching up with Carl Anthony Towns. And one thing about Cat is, you know, his experience in the NBA battling with bigs such as Joel Embiid remembers that infamous moment. That could be an unsportsmanlike foul, maybe. Yeah, yep, yeah. upgraded. Things need to calm down now. The officials doing a good job of stepping in between. You know, what you like there, there's no over-emotional response to Carl Anthony Towns. You know, we talked about in the tune-up game, the issues he had, of course, with, you know, he felt he had with the referees, but this is good for Cat and great for the referees. Hard foul, unsportsmanlike, but we don't need anything else here to kick off. And, and you know, that had been building. Uh, you could see it on the play before. You know, Polinera, a little, little overly aggressive uh, on the denial, and. You know, the immediate following play, uh, you get what I think is a, a clear unsportsmanlike foul. So, you know, there's a lot of frustration with that Italian team, a lot of pride there as well, but uh, you want to see them finish the game out the right way. Two forty-three to go, leading by 12 points. He's phenomenal from the free throw line against Vilas Filipinas. Towns. <laughs> he's five for seven, which is relatively a good shooting percentage, but the caliber of a player he is, you expect him to make all his free throws. 
Well, you know, in that first game, uh, 15 for 16 from the free throw line was just kind of living there. Uh, it'll be interesting to see, with the pressure being the way it is, what, what does the DR look to do here over the final three minutes offensively? Montero now with the ball in his hands. 14 points of difference. Goes for another three. Three is up. Three is good. Well, KO to S. SLT Empo. That Carl Anthony Towns. Well, it's his time right now here at the FIBA World Cup. Making it now a 16 point ball game. Nice move by Richie inside the paint. The Italians with just over two minutes to save this game. Well, for these turning it over, Italians got to break it. He's a bit of contact, but foul is cool, but time rejection there by Andres Feliz. But Spisu will go to the charity strike. Yeah, Feliz frustrated with himself there. <laughs> if Montero doesn't make that foul, he might have seen the greatest block in the FIBA World Cup this summer. <laughs> you know, big three here from Towns. Uh, you know, Italy's going to have to really step up their pressure, look to force turnovers like they did there. I expect to see a, a, quite a bit of trapping from them over the last two minutes here. The entrenador, el entrenador, Che Garcia. I'm very surprised to see him leave Argentina as with him for the majority of the FIBA World Cup qualifiers. To go to the FIBA America. And again, a dramatic irony when this team defeated Argentina team. Had Facundo Cabasso, not to mention Gabriel Deck in the final game of the window. There's a victory in the Dominican Republic, trailed by 17 points. That sent Che Garcia's former team to an early summer vacation. His team currently to the Field World Cup is Montero. Trying to find Carl Anthony Towns. 144 to go here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, I think Italy's got to look to be more aggressive in that pick and roll coverage, look to trap it. They're going to have to get some deflections and steals. Can't just play cat and mouse there, uh, trying to get a stop with a full shot clock. And he now with the ball in his hands, finding Victor Lees. Space defense, suffocated defense by the Azuri. Great job by Victor Lees, throwing it off Richie. 2.1 left here on the shot clock. But that's what they have to do. You know, you see them trapping there, almost coming up with a big steal. Uh, it, you know, it's got to be nothing but that. Well, the Dominican fans love the occasion. The Italian school in timeout. I think the Dominican Republic actually called timeout because with 2.1, they're going to try and orchestrate something again. A good shot here. Well, let's go and listen to see what Che Garcia has to say to his players. There is Che Garcia with those fans from the Dominican Republic. Very charismatic coach, of course. <laughs> no, absolutely. Uh, you know, he's had a ton of success. Knows how to win, knows how to lead an underdog team to success. Uh, you know, important here with two seconds left on the shot clock, you know, the biggest thing for them is to have floor balance on whatever shot they get. You know, they don't want to give a quick basket to Italy. A lot of times, uh, I, I always like to go to a post up here, knowing that we would have guys back as a result. So let's see what they run here. But the biggest thing is not allowing Italy to, to get a run out for a quick basket. Andres Feliz will inbound is here for the Dominicans. Joint top score in this game along with Carl Anthony Towns. 27, 24 points, excuse me. Got to get the ball inbound. Finds Montero. It's got to be quick from the half court. Almost got it. Wouldn't be surprised if he did win it. But now the Italians, they got to be quick. This has got to think about taking a three-pointer. Finds Richie. Richie takes a three. Three is up. Three is good. And the Azuri cutting it down to single digits. And they need to trap here. 
Separation, hang on now for the Dominicans. Richie now coming up with the interception. Finds Polinara, but Polinara turns it over. And again, a something out of nothing there for Victor Lees. Very unfortunate for the Italians. Pulls up for a quick three. Got it! Well, he's going to the free throw line here for the full point play. That's a huge three pointer by Marco Spisu. Well, Spisu can had to take that shot there. Molto grazie, Signore Spisu. Quattro punti, per favore. He's got to make this free throw, coach. Yeah, and also the fifth foul there for Montero. So one of their ball handlers and creators now out of the game. Interesting to see who they come in here with. Looks like it's going to be Mendoza. 55.8 seconds left. He can make this. A seven point deficit. And the Italians, as you mentioned, they have to trap on their full court pressure. They got to stop down the other end. Apollonara has got to take care of the ball when it comes in his hands. Yeah, and that was a heartbreaker. I mean, think about it. Were it not for that, this is, you know, potentially down to a five point game. Well, Dominicans. Taking their time now, not wasting anything. Man to man full court pressure coming from the Azuri. They've got a trap, they've got to get a stop here. And they foul a very good free throw shooter, Carl Anthony Towns. But having said that, he has missed two free throws so far this evening. That's only the 14th foul for the Italians. Yeah, and that's a nice adjustment, bringing Cat back, letting him be your outlet. Uh, and, and maybe even ball handler. So, you know, let's see what happens if it comes into him again, if he ends up bringing the ball up for them. Well, if I can, no trap coming. Here it comes here, Spisu Polinara. He's not fouling right away here. Finds Andreas Feliz, seven three-pointers. Doesn't get it, Polinara. Finds one, Italian's gotta be quick here. Trailer by seven. Spisu down the lane. Missed a wide open layup. They gotta count it. So now it's a five point ball game with 31.3 seconds left. Yeah, and you know, Feliz uh, maybe a little early with that attempt. And then in transition, everybody concerned with the three point shooters, but you gotta stop the ball there. You know, two point possession game is the quick basket that hurts you more than the three. Now, do you trap right away, or do you just wait for them to get the ball to the half court? Uh, I think they're definitely going to trap without fouling here. Well, good defense, Polinara. The Dominicans have two seconds to get the ball over the halfway line. Yeah, I think they might take their time out. So you think they might advance the ball here for this timeout? Yeah, I think absolutely. You know, the point of the timeout, uh, obviously they were in trouble there trying to get it across half court and take this opportunity to move it across, uh, make sure they get the ball in the hands of, of somebody solid. I, I think Italy's going to definitely look to trap again without fouling initially, uh, but, but they're definitely going to advance. The Italian players just need to go to their bench. They're still arguing with the referees to try and get something, but let's listen out to Che Garcia. Some of the key highlights here, Andreas Feliz, he has just simply been phenomenal in this game. 24 points, seven for 10 from the perimeter. Coach, fair to say, your most valuable player in this game? Uh, I mean, no question. Uh, the way he shot the ball from three, uh, and especially, I think, you know, in the first quarter when everything was not going their way, it was Feliz that settled this group down. Uh, you know, really big moment in the game. Carl Anthony Towns as well, finishing with a double-double. Look at that, five rebounds and five assists away from a triple-double. I mean, those are MVP stats. Yeah, no question. And I, I would assume they're going to try to get the ball in his hands here pretty quickly. Maybe Cat stepping out and then Felice coming for a handoff or 
know, with this set, maybe a pin down initially, getting Fleece coming out to the top of the key. Dominican Republic. Wow, it's got to be a charge here. A costly turnover. And the Azuri. Getting a little bit of fortuna at the moment. A little bit of luck. But that's what you need at this stage. 25.2 seconds. And that's a that's a tough spot for Quinones. Uh, you know, I've been sitting for a really long time. Comes into the game uh, you know, in the hopes of getting a better free throw shooter on the floor. But you know when you've been been sitting for that long, it's hard to just jump into the pace of play like that. Now, do you go for a three-pointer here, or do you go for whatever's best? Uh, you go for the quickest, best shot, and, and that's where the defense has to know that. So if they get too concerned with the three, and they give up the easy two, uh, you know, now things get really tight here. Well, they have to be quick, of course. Time not on this side. Spisu now, nowhere to go, and gets fouled. That's going to be two free throws coming up for Marcus Spisu. The Johnson comes down to a three-point ball game, potentially a one-possession game. Well, it looked like it was going to be a comfortable victory for the Dominican Republic, but it almost looks like it's become Operation Hang On. Yeah, no question. And, you know, it, if it gets down to a one-possession game, now, you know, the pressure of the moment starts to weigh on a lot of guys. So, you know the pressure's coming. I would assume they go back to Cat as their press breaker and ball handler. Well, makes both free throws. Three-point ball game. Substitution coming in. So Paola's coming back in for Polinaro. Interesting decision. You know, Cat definitely with the size advantage. If he if he flashes to the ball, it's going to be hard to deny him. Uh, but what do they do after? Do they run a trap? Uh, or are they willing to deny and, and see if Cat can bring it up versus pressure? Well, the Dominicans just need to inbound this game. Quinones, he won his court, he's fouled. That will be two free throws coming up. Yeah, and that's a big moment. You know, obviously, uh, Quinones had just been in the game the play before, called for the offensive foul, this time uh, in a tough position on that catch, but able to draw the foul. See this man in the NBA G League. Free throw is so impeccable now for him. Got the first one. That's why he was in the game. You know, they wanted his free throw shooting. Uh, you know, tough moment. I mean, credit to Coach Garcia having the confidence and bringing him back in. We'll make a both now. Oh, I missed it. Species with a rebound. But they got a call an early entry against Maku Spisu. We'll have to look at the, re I think they may review this actually. No, the timing, they're gonna, so they're so the time, the time is fine. Yeah, and you rarely, oh wow, you, you rarely would see that call. I mean, there's so much movement on free throws in the international game. I think the official needs to show some better feel there. That rebound was not in question, so I don't think an advantage was really gained from that. Uh, very tough break. Quinones, another chance here. Spisu would definitely feel hot done by that position. Makes a second one. Well, we gotta be quick. The Italians have uh, got a cool timeout. There was Chapaco Misecco. Well, that's usually the way we go when we go get a cup of coffee at halftime. Yeah, and if he had seen that last call, he, he probably would have gone ballistic. Uh, substitution here rather than the timeout. Italy's gonna try to get something quick. Again, two possession game. The big thing for the Dominican Republic, do not give up the easy basket. So it's not the three point shot that's gonna hurt you here. It's the quick basket that does. Remember the record has been nine games with club of Dino Cesari and Italy. Spice has gotta think about this now. Lines Polinara. We gotta be quick here. Richie now fade away three pointer. Tries to get it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the Dominican Republic going to leave in the victory. 87 to 82 here in game day two in the Super Bay picture of the 2023 FIBA Basketball World Cup. They led by as many as 60 points. They came back, but in the end, the Dominicans prevailed. Collective effort led by Andreas Feliz 
and Carl Anthony Towns. A combined total of 48 points for those two. They now move to 2 0 here on the Italians after their victory against Angolia. Moves to 1 and 1. Coach, 1 8 game, but you know what? That last play there, the rebound by Matthew Spisu, that could have been a game changer. Yeah, I mean, it's a really big call. Uh, you rarely see that call in, in international basketball. So I'm sure Italy is very frustrated with that. That kind of summarizes maybe their feelings about this officiating crew. But at the end of the day, you have to give credit to the Dominican Republic. They shot the lights out. They were able to respond when they started the game out 12-0. So, you know, really quality win for them to put them at the top of the group. That was five assists short of a triple-double, but look at that image right there. The Dominican Republic, coached by Che Garcia, assisted by Daniel Sioni, and very well known in Israel in the Israeli Winter League. But this team is business. One victory away from getting the top position in this group that would see them have a better crossover with Group B. Yeah, no question. This is a, this is a huge win for them. You know, I think they're opening a lot of eyes to people in this tournament. So now two quality wins, and, and they did it in different styles. You know, game one, really Cat carrying the load for them. Uh, but, but I think where he needs credit is he had made the adjustments they needed in this game. So Italy came in with a great game plan. They were in the gaps. They were not going to let him beat, beat them off the bounce from the perimeter. 16 three-pointers from the Dominican Republic, 41%. I mean, we saw that stat. It was 44 at the beginning of the fourth quarter. With that kind of stat, you would expect to win this game. Yeah, I mean, you know, 10 threes made in the second half, uh, but the adjustment of, of moving the ball and not trying to force the drives, uh, I think, was a really key key component to their win. Well, other statistics you want to look at, the Italians, I mean, they shot very well from the free throw line, 17 for 18. Dominican's missing four, three point, uh, four free throws. You know, looking at the turnovers, interesting to see the Dominican Republic had 13 turnovers on the Italians, only seven. Just in case the shots weren't dropping, were they? Yeah, you know, I think I think that's really it. I mean, two games in a row now where three-point looks that they've been making leading up to this tournament, they suddenly miss. You know, Fontecchio especially, uh, one for eight from three, and a lot of those were, were really solid looks for him. So they're going to have to make shots at some point in this tournament to have the success they were expecting. Well, there was Paolo with a post-up against Montero. He had four points. The Italians, as we mentioned, led by Marco Spisu. But I guess the underlying fact is Simone Fontecchio, only 13 points is their second top scorer for the Italians. Yeah, I mean, I, I think he'd be the first to tell you he's got to do better. Uh, they had some advantages uh, with, with their post-ups against the guards. I think the score of the game kind of led them to go away from that. Uh, but, you know, both both of their uh, uh, guards have been struggling from the perimeter, so they've got to find a way to, to start making some of these threes. Well, there was a three-pointer by Stefano Tony. He finished with eight points, only one field goal with inside the rainbow. He had two three-pointers in this game, but it just wasn't enough here from the Azuri. Montero finishing 12, finding the big man cat under the lane. As we said, five assists away from a potential triple-double for the three-time NBA All-Star, but what an impact he's had for this national team. Yeah, no question. Uh, I mean, just draws so much attention. We saw it in the first game against the Philippines. If you're not over-shifting, it's so hard to defend him on the perimeter as a big man. And then in this game, you know, Italy starting out, I think, with the right game plan of really being heavy in gaps, not letting him beating him uh, off the dribble. But then, you know, credit to Cat. He made the adjustment of sharing the ball, and his teammates knocked those shots down. Colin Anthony Towns finished with four three-pointers off the 16 made by the Dominican Republic. But it just was the night of Carl Anthony Towns and not to mention, let's pay homage to the likes of Andres Feliz. He was phenomenal. Well, the other game taking on later today, Gilas Filipinas will be taking on Angola. You will remember that game very well four years ago in Foshan, China, as you were victorious that night against Yang Giao and the Philippines. Well, that will take place later on at 8 p.m. local time. Dominican Republic now going top of the group. But for now, we would like to say to all of our fans in the Dominican Republic, adios, buenas noches, and to all the fans in Italy, arrivederci and buonanotte.
And after a tough start where Italy went 12 mil, yes, but we are not live. We are not live in, in Italy right now. So let, let me check. Let me check. Okay, ditemi voi.